Hi everybody. The purpose of this video is to show you how you can get temporary access into my math lab, which is the courseware that we'll be using in this particular class. Now notice here that I am at our homepage and I am in the student view because the instructor view is not very intuitive for you guys. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come down here to, to where it says getting started with my math lab and you want to click on that. That will bring you to this particular page here. And notice we have a couple of options. One is we have the getting temporary access video, which hopefully you've gotten this far, or if you've gotten this far, you and, and clicked on this, you're watching this particular video. What you want to do now is click on this button right here, My Math Lab Registration Instructions. That will bring up this PDF file. Once this PDF file is loaded, what you want to do is click on this link right here. That will bring you to this page where you can sign in with your Pearson account if you have one and if you're new to Pearson, which most of you will be, at least at Limestone, then you're going to need to create an account. So we're going to assume that we're all new and we are going to create an account. Now the first thing you need to put in, put in is your email address. We all recommend that you put in your Limestone email address. So that is what I'm going to do, or I'm going to put in a bogus Limestone email address. Okay, I would recommend that you let your um, username be the same thing as your e email. Make sure you use a secure password, but yet one that you can remember. Personally, I tend to use a um, password manager. And then we can fill the rest of this out. My first name is Robert, although I tend to go by Bob. My last name is Boyle, although I tend to go by Boyle. The country is United States, so just start typing it, and it will come up. Uh, your role is that of student. My role would be instructor. Your level of study is a college student, undergrad. Um, you know, hopefully you know the month and day of your, of your birth or month and year of your birth. Yes, I'm very old. You're, you're going to need to collect that you agree to the terms of use and acknowledge the privacy policy. However, if you want to keep, if you want to reduce the clutter in your email, you're also going to want to unclick this. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click Create Account. And your account is created. You can go ahead and click Continue. You will be given the opportunity to um, put in your phone number as a protection if you forget your password, since this is just a demo exercise. I'm not going to bother doing that. And this brings you up to this particular page where you have where, where you have four options. Um, first option is to um, if you is to put in your access code if you actually purchase this from the bookstore. If you purchase MML from the bookstore, they will give you an access code and you would put it in here. The second option is to get student access for 24 months at the cost of $109.99. Now, if you are interested in taking 122, or if you think you might be interested in taking 122, which is the follow on to this course, we use the exact same book. So you may want to go ahead and purchase the 24 month version. That will give you two years to take both 115 and 122, which is a fair amount of time. And it would be substantial cost savings to you. If you have no intention of taking 122, or if you think the odds are against it, and 122 is pre-cal, and again, it is the follow on, then you are going to want to purchase the 18 week access, which is basically enough access for one semester. Okay. Now purchase the cost of the 18 week access from the books from directly from Pearson is $74.99. The cost of the courseware from the bookstore is $87.49, which is a $12.50 difference. So keep that in mind, 
so in making a decision on where to purchase a product, you might want to keep that in mind. It is $12.50 cheaper if you go directly from Pearson. Now, at this particular point in time, we do not want to use these three options. We want to use the fourth option, which is to get temporary access without payment for 14 days. This will allow you to participate in this course for 14 days before you have to make a decision whether you want to take the course, continue with the course, or drop the course. So if you wanted to drop the course, then you can do so without losing any money. And this is what we want to choose. And of course, it'll ask you, are you sure? Of course we're sure. We have to be patient. And, and then we are done. And now we have the option of getting a, a, of printing a receipt or going to my courses. And I want to go to the course. And here it is. Um, here it tells you that temporary access expires in 14 days. If you want to go into the course, you can go ahead and click on this. And this is what your home page looks like. Uh, it gives you um, your view can either be by month or two weeks. It doesn't particularly matter. But over here, but but this calendar will list the will, will list the assignments and when they're due. And the main reason why you haven't see, does, don't see anything yet is because I haven't done anything yet. Um, over here, we'll list the entire all the assignments in the course, which once again I still have to work on. Um, over here, this will give you your student gradebook. And obviously, since the course didn't start, we have no grades. This right here will give you access to your ebook. And as you can see, it is done by it is done specifically by chapter. For example, here's chapter one. It breaks it down into um, specific sections. So this actually right here, this are, is, is all the material associated with um, the, the very first section we're gonna cover in our first lecture. Uh, it, it will include videos, which are almost as good as mine. Uh, you can also look at the e-text. And you're also able to, to view the e-text on your iPhone or iPad using the Pearson Plus app, which I will likely discuss in class. So these right here, the course home, your assignments, your gradebook, and perhaps your e-text are the things that you will be using perhaps, perhaps the most through MML. And once again, that is how you get temporary access to MML. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. This is Bob Will, signing off.